outside and um, uh, in a moment. If you have any question during this event, please uh, use the chat or raise the hand. There is a team of us here available to support and uh, any uh, ask any questions. And if you have any questions after that, please email us to the New England at mentalhealthttcnetwork.org. Uh, uh, today, um, and like in other events uh, that are sponsored by the New England Mental Health TTC, we invite you all to use, uh, while you are using the chat, affirming, respectful, and recovery-oriented language in all activities. Uh, we're always hoping in all our events to promote a language that's strength-based, that's inclusive to all the uh, cultures. Please flee to a uh, gender's perspective, so please use your pronouns. Uh, healing trauma center responsive. Um, free of labels, so we invite you. This is really important for us as a network. So um, as I said, so uh, I work at the Yale Program for Recovery and Community Health, and my role is the Director of Health Equity and Internationalized State Affairs, uh, but I have been working with the New England Mental Health TTC Technology Transfer Center since the beginning. That is, we are currently on our sixth year, if you are not familiar with our network, um, we are a sponsored by SAMHSA, uh, funding for SAMHSA, and there is uh, 10 uh, centers around the, the, the US. We are clearly at the New England region, and we have two partners. Uh, we are partnered with C4 Innovations, uh, as well as with the Harvard Department of Psychiatry, to conduct all the training and technical assistance around the region free of charge. Um, and in addition to this uh, huge network, so those networks are available to you all uh, with multiple presentations. There's a uh, Center of Excellence in Latino Mental Health ETC, as well as a National American Indian and Alaska Native. Uh, so any of these networks you can access and download free information. For our specific New England Mental Health TTC, uh, we are really uh, concentrating on training that is uh, honoring always the first uh, the person and lived experience as the center, and we promote resilience and re resilience and recovery because we understand that our principles are based on respect. It's always emerging out of hope. It's family and person driven, and today we are going to be talking about family members as well uh, as yourself. Uh, it comes in many ways and paths of recovery. Uh, pr it's promoted through collaboration and more importantly, is holistic. And that's what we're here to do today. It's a holistic and amazing experiential workshop. So we are gonna really invite you to be present, mindful today for this event. Um, uh, invite you to disconnect all kinds of devices that we now have in this world. Uh, and turn it over to my colleague, Cherie Bragg, uh, who is a program manager at our program and who is actually the um, uh, promoter of this amazing workshop. So Cherie, thank you very much. And the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Maria. Um, and welcome everyone. We're so glad that you could join us today. Um, as Maria mentioned, this is part of the New England MHTTC's family workforce series. Um, we did kick that off on October 25th with Lucy Johnstone, who presented the Power Threat Meaning Framework. And I believe that video is on the MHTTC website if anyone wants to look it up. Also pleased to announce that our next workshop will be on January 9th. And we will have Cindy Hadge from the Wildflower Alliance with us. Um, joining to talk about the Hearing Voices Network as it relates to um, training and support for families. So that's um, an exciting workshop. And of course, a lot about the HVN perspective. Um, I just wanted to say that as a person who is a family member myself, I know many of you here might be also, um, and I experienced direct impact from being separated from a parent through systems. Um, so I can say that often family members are overlooked in our systems or even can be the impact can even be invisible um having to navigate systems on behalf of um, someone that you care about or even just deeply caring about someone who's in distress um that impact can often be marginalized and so therefore so is the support um that 
lot to go along with it. Um, today's workshop obviously is something that I think we can all benefit from today. Um, and just a reminder that family members aren't, you know, it's not, we're not just talking about parents, though parents are huge advocates, obviously, for their children of all ages. Uh, but we also are talking about siblings and grandparents and um, friends and colleagues. So many of us care about people that are in distress. So these kind of workshops are valuable for all of us, uh, but we're presenting it as learning some tools that you can share with families. So without further ado, I wanted to introduce um, someone I'm proud to be able to call a friend and an amazing presenter, um, Linda Lentini. Um, can't count the number of years we've <laughs> known each other, but uh, I know she's been an amazing advocate, um, teacher. Um, I know she was an avid runner um, and a workshop presenter, but I know when Linda found her way to a lot of holistic healing that you really saw her passion um, shine. Uh, she's just amazing at this work. I know I'm, I'm one of those people that comes kicking and screaming to this sort of thing sometimes. Um, you know, like, what do you mean you want me to breathe and that kind of thing. But I've also been through her workshops and these breath, body, mind workshops. And it, it does have a huge impact. Just the taking a few seconds to breathe deeply and be present is huge for all of us. So i um, glad you are here today. We couldn't be more fortunate than to have Linda with us. So without further ado, please take it away, Linda. And thank you for being here. Thank you, Sheree, for the wonderful introduction. And I'm really happy to be here. Um, so my name is Linda Lentini. I currently am the Director of Healing from Within at Toivo by Advocacy Unlimited. So I provide these mind-body practices in restrictive settings. Um, and I do all of these practices pretty much everywhere. I'll talk a little bit about breath, body, mind, um, but I want people to feel it versus just being in our head about them. So, but let me give you a couple of things. Um, you can do all the practices standing or sitting down. You're, you're fine doing either one. Um, so you don't have to stand for them if that doesn't feel right in your body today, or you can stand for them, or you can alternate. Um, all the practices are safe for pretty much everyone. And the reason I say pretty much, if anyone's expecting, I just want people to be aware of not doing any forceful out breaths or doing any breath holds. And if you're recovering from any kind of respiratory issue or um, surgery, please don't do any of the, um, the forceful out breaths or the breath holds. So besides that, please take care of yourself. I'm gonna ask you to do some movements. Um, again, I'm inviting you to do the movements. So if it doesn't feel right in your body, do what feels right and modify. I'll give you modifications for all of the movements. Um, but if it's, you know, something that you feel you're able to do today, please do it. I'm going to lead you through a series of uh, movements and some breath work tied in with the movements. I am going to share my sound. I am going to play some music. If at any point you cannot hear me, please let me know. I have an external microphone, but as we all know with Zoom and the wonderful world of Zoom, sometimes that fails. So please always send me a chat or let me know that you can't hear me um, so we can correct that situation. So let me get to sharing my sound. Um, I was introduced to Breath, Body, Mind it's been over a decade and I've been doing these practices pretty much every day for the past five years. And I've noticed the biggest difference in myself. Does that mean that every day I wake up going, yay? No, <laughs> I may, it means that I wake up every day just the way I am. And some days I am full of everything and I can't wait for the day to start. And I love like like experiencing every moment of it. And there's other moments that I'm like, okay, we're gonna get through this moment because the next moment will be different and I know it. So it's the hope that I hold on to, um, that if I have a moment that doesn't feel that great in my body, in, in my being, that I could ride through that moment with these practices and know that the next moment might be different. 
Um, Sheree and I have been friends. I've known her for uh, a little while now. And she did mention that um, that there, there has been a passing and that um, so a lot of times with grief, we're told that you, you know, this is how you're supposed to, you know, deal with this. So a lot of you have your cameras off. So if something is stirred up inside of you during the movement, um, have those, those expressions, um, feel comfortable um, having those expressions. I'm gonna create um, kind of a, a beginning, a middle and an end. And at the end, I'm gonna invite people to share. And that doesn't mean that you have to unmute. You can just put a chat in. Um, but again, you know, something is stirred up, have that expression. Um, so that's enough talking for right now. I'm going to invite people that if you want, you could stand up and we're going to do a little tapping and I'm going to get to my space to show you what that means about tapping. This is a little different than EFT. This is tapping different parts of our body and I'll show you what we're going to be tapping and then I'll put on the music and ask you to Joe Law to join me. So we're gonna tap our sides, under our collarbone, the base of our neck, our arms, and I'll show you the sequence. And then we're gonna tap our tummy and then outside of our legs. And as you go down the outside of your legs, bend only as far as it feels comfortable for you, taking care of your back. You're gonna go all the way down and then you're gonna Tap the outside of your feet, inside your feet, up the inside of your lower legs, the front of your upper legs, your lower back, your kidney area, and then back to one side. Again, taking care of yourself as we do this. So I'm gonna put on some music and we're going to tap to the music. Famous last words. We're going to tap to music. Okay, now it's coming on. Just move with the music. If you can't hear me or the music, let me know. Tap one side. the other side. Under your collarbone. Face of your neck. One of your shoulders. All the way down on the top of that arm. Clap your hands. Inside your arm. Now the other shoulder. All the way down on the top part of your arm. Again, clapping inside your arm. Our amazing tummy. Outside of our legs. <clears throat> All the way down the outside of our legs. outside of our ankles and around our feet. Inside of our feet. Inside our lower legs. 
the front of our upper legs. <laughs> the front of our upper legs. Base of your neck, uh, back. Your kidney area. Back to one side. And the other side. Under our collarbone. You could turn around or just dance. Come to stillness, close your eyes. And notice. Notice how your body feels. And notice your breath. And notice your thoughts. and open your eyes. So that type of tapping is about moving energy throughout our body. And they say certain emotions stay in our organs. This helps with our lungs. This helps with our immune system. The outside of our legs helps with our long life. So each point is important to tap and it goes in order for a reason. But if you ever come to my, one of my classes, I go into a little bit more. And some people say, well, when I'm not feeling happy, because we, Breath, Body, Mind Foundation helps people throughout the world. We have um, programs going in Ukraine, in Israel, in Palestine, Palestine, in Rwanda, in Ireland. There's a number of different courses. And sometimes people will say, well, I don't feel happy right now, so I'm not going to do that. And it's not about trying to, to be happy when you feel sad. It's about moving the energy. So it's really important to try to do that. So that's an energizing practice. Sometimes we get depleted um, with everything that we're carrying. So we need to energize before we do any kind of breath practice. We're going to do one more energizing practice. And I apologize for my dog, but he likes to join in with me. Um, one more energizing practice, which is called a ha breath, H-A breath. And this is where I want people to take care of themselves. So if you don't like loud noises, I'll put my hand up and let you know that we're going to do a loud noise. Um, the ha breath is good for releasing frustration. It's a good energizer. And it's also like empowering. When I first started it, I was like, I don't like this because I'm not a big fan of loud noises. I don't like... I guess I wasn't so comfortable getting in touch with my own frustration, but this is really about getting it out. So it's almost like an organized or controlled way to yell without worrying about hurting somebody's feeling or without worrying about anything else. It's just getting that frustration out. And this is called, my version of it is called the ha breath or the, the power ha breath. So we're gonna breathe in as we bring our hands up all the way to the top where our hands are nice and open at the top. We're gonna to breathe in as we go up and breathe out as we allow our arms to come down, closing our hands gently together as we breathe out with a ha from our belly. So I'm gonna make a loud noise. So if you wanna mute yourself or wanna turn me off, you can, but I'll show you what it sounds like. And the ha needs to come from your belly if possible. That way it's a really good frustration release. So let's do that together. I'm going to just show you one and then I'm going to ask you to join me. So you're going to breathe in and then breathe out. Okay, so we'll just do a couple of those. Those are energizing. 
respiratory, or if you're expecting, please don't do this practice and just breathe while we do it. So we'll do five of them together. So let's coordinate our breath with a nice breath in and breath out. Breathing in, loud noise. <laughs> And allow your arms to go down by your side, close your eyes. Or if it doesn't feel comfortable closing your eyes, just lower your gaze. And notice how your body feels. Notice your breath. And notice your thoughts. And open your eyes or raise your eyelids. So not everyone feels comfortable closing their eyes. The important part is to check in with yourself. How does it feel like in your body? And if you notice, I'm not giving you the answers because how it feels in my body might be different than how it feels in yours. It also might be different from one day to the next. And it's okay to recognize how it feels in your body. So that's it for energizing practices we're going to do. Now we're going to do some calming ones, some gentle ones, ones that are really about um, being gentle with ourselves, our body, and just our breath. So I'm going to invite you to, to put your hands on your heart, close your eyes, and ask your heart what it needs. If you've closed your eyes, you can open them, keeping your hand on your heart. I'm going to show you the movement that we're going to do. And again, you can just stay right here or just watch us. It's fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw in with our breath in what we need in our heart. And you notice we start, we draw in what we need first. And then with our out breath, we're going to send love, kindness, compassion, whatever you want to send to everyone on this call. And you're gonna draw in more of what you need. And then whatever you wanna send out to other people, your family and friends, to the areas we live in in the world, and then to the world in general. But making sure that you draw in whatever your heart said that it needed today. And then breathing out with a gentle, long, ah, out breath. So we're trying to um, extend your out breath. That's where the calming happens. That's where the magic happens. So I know many of you might still have your hands on your heart. So let's do that together. And this is a gentle ha breath, a heart ha, a love ha. It is really about extending the out breath. So breathing in, drawing in what you need, breathing out with a long, Ah, sending out whatever you want to people on the call. Breathing in. Ah. Breathing in. Ah. Drawing in. Ah, I'm sending love and kindness to one, one another. Breathing in what you need. Sending out love and kindness to our family and friends. Ha! Ah. Drawing in what you need. Sending out love and kindness to the places we live in the world. Ha! Ah. 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 into the world in general, drawing in what we need, sending out love and kindness to the world. Ah. 
Ah. Ah, two more, drawing in what you need, sending out love and kindness to one another, ah. drawing in whatever you need, sending out whatever you want to one another on the call. Ah. Now gather all of those positive things, bring them into your heart. Close your eyes or lower your gaze or just check in internally. And notice notice the energy around your heart. Keeping your eyes closed or lowered, lower your hands down. Notice how your body feels. Notice your breath. And notice your thoughts. And open your eyes or raise your eyelids. So that's a nice one to get us ready for a calming practice called 4242. Two. And because sometimes we need to calm down quickly, we need to walk into a situation that we might know might be uh, full of strong emotions, and we don't necessarily want to be caught up in that. And we want to make sure that we stay nice and um, calm during it. And there's times that strong emotions come up and it's we want to figure out a way to calm down quickly. So I'm going to show you the, the practice. I'm going to invite you to join me with the movement. If it doesn't feel right to move, just try to do the breath um, because the breath is the important part of it. So we're going to stand with our feet shoulder width apart. We're going to have our palms facing up a little bit below our tummy button. And we're gonna start with two breaths in and sighing them out. Then we're gonna breathe in for the count of four, hold for the count of two, breathing out for the count of four, and then holding for two. If this doesn't feel right because you have a shoulder issue or it just doesn't feel right, just move your hands up to a certain point, stop, and come down again if that doesn't even feel right and that's okay just do the breath if you can this is really really calming and this gets us ready for the four four six two which is a longer version of this breath and it helps calm us down quickly it's one of the ones during the the height of not knowing what was going on with covid that i really relied on and i did a lot during the days where i didn't even know what was going on and um, so it's one I rely on heavily. Um, if I know that a lot's going on, I'm going to wake up doing it. I'm going to go to bed doing it. So, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with our palms facing up a little bit below our tummy button. And we're going to start with two breaths together and making sure you have that really loud sigh out, tapping into the vagal nerve. So we're going to breathe in. Breathing out, breath in, breath out, breathing in, two, three, four, hold, two, breathing out, two, three, four, hold, two. Breathing in, two, three, four, hold, two. Breathing out, two, three, four, hold, two. Breathing in, two, three, four, hold, two. Breathing out. Two, three, four, hold, two. Two more. Breathing in, two, three, four, 
hold two. Breathing out two, three, four, hold two. Last time. Breathing in two, three, four, hold two. Breathing out two, three, four, hold two. You allow your arms to go down by your side, come to stillness, close or lower your eyelids, and just notice. Notice how your body feels. Notice your breath. And notice if the quality of your thoughts has changed. Mm -hmm. And then open or raise your eyelids. So I'm going to do two, four, four, six, two. Um, and it's, it's one that you build up to, um, but I just want to show you the difference between the 4242 two and the 4462. Four, and some people can hold their breath and breathe out. So it's the same movement, um, but it's a longer hold up at the top and the breath out is longer. So we, we hold for four and then we breathe out for six versus holding for two and breathing out for four. If that doesn't work for you, go back to the four, two, four, two, but let's do two, four, four, six, twos and see if that works for you. Again, palms facing up a little bit below our tummy button. Nice breath in, breath out with a sigh. Ah. Another breath in, breath out with a sigh. Ah. Breathing in. Two, three, four, hold. Two, three, four. Breathing out. Two, three, four, five, six. Pause. Two. Breathing in. Two, three, four, hold. Two, three. Four, breathing out, two, three, four, five, six, pause, two. And allow your arms to go down by your side, close or lower your eyelids. And once again, notice. Notice how your body feels. Notice your breath. And notice your thoughts. And open or raise your eyelids. So I showed you some examples of a calming breath and activating breath. Now we're gonna do a balancing breath. So the core practice in breath, body, mind is coherent breathing. We're breathing in for six seconds, breathing out for six seconds, and we're slowing our breath rate down to about five breaths per minute. So a lot of people breathe anywhere between 13 to 20, depending on what's going on. You wanna slow it way down. The coherence is where we could show up in life, um, relaxed yet focused, which is the key point of it. So we don't have too much energy. We don't have too little energy. We show up focused, yet relax. So coherent breathing and the two psychiatrists that created it or kind of put the sequence together, realize that you can do the best work. Everything in your body works the best when you're coherent. Um, so we're going to do it a little bit before we sit to do it, because I think it's really helpful to sit to do it. We need to do some movements because a lot of us are tired and if we sit to try to do a breath work, we're gonna fall asleep. So let's do some movement with it. First, we can get some coherent breathing. And it's similar to what we just did with the 4242 or 4462. 
we're going to do arm circles. And what I like to try to do is I create a circle around me and then I fill that circle in with whatever I need. If that visualization doesn't work, do what feels right for you. It is just about slowing our breath down with movement. So palms facing up a little bit below our tummy bone and taking a nice breath in, breath out with a sigh. Breathing in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. Breathing in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. Breathing in. And out. Breathing in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. Now we're going to reverse the circle. Breathing in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. Breathing in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four, two more. Breathing in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. Last time. Breathing in, two, three, and as you breathe out, give yourself a nice hug and out, two, three, four. Keeping that hug, closing or lowering your eyes and just notice. Feel that hug. Releasing that hug down keeping your eyes closed if they were, or just lowering your gaze. And notice how your body feels. Notice the quality of your thoughts and if they've changed. Notice the rhythm of your breath. and open your eyes. So I'm gonna invite you to go ahead and sit or lay down. If you can lay down, that would be great because then you can get nice relaxation. And most of you have your cameras off, so it's okay if you fall asleep. I'm sure they'll end the Zoom call and you can continue to sleep. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put on some music and then I'm going to invite you to start soft, softening different parts of your body. And then I'm going to put on some piano notes. With the piano notes, we're going to breathe in as the piano notes go up and breathe out as the piano notes go down. And I'll give you some direction as the piano notes are on. Then I'll fade the piano notes out. I'll put on some more music so you can just relax. The checking in in between each practice is just as important as the practice itself. So let's start by taking a nice breath in. Breath out with a sigh. Another breath in. Breath out with a sigh. And close or lower your eyelids. Soften the muscles in your forehead and around your eyes. In your cheeks and in your jaw, just soften this whole area.
soften your neck and your shoulders. Soften the muscles around your heart and in your tummy. In your arms and in your hands, just soften. In your legs and in your feet, just soften. And check in with your entire body from the top of your head all the way to the tips of your toes. Where can you soften? I'm going to start to pace your breath with my voice. Breathing in, two, three, and out, two, three. Breathing in, two, three, and out, two, three. Breathing in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. Breathing in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. Breathing in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, Four. Now the piano notes are coming on. Breathing in as the notes go up. And breathing out as the notes go down. Breathing in. Breathing out. Couple of breaths just to get you used to breathing in this rhythm. And gently breathing out. you're trying to hard that smile form on your face it makes the breathing so much easier Thank 
breathe in your belly fills with breath. As you breathe out, breath releases from your belly. If you're not sure which way your belly is going, you can put one hand around your heart and one hand on your belly. Breathing in. Breathing out. with energy and as you breathe out softening a little bit more Slowly feed the toes. Allow your breath to return to whatever pace feels comfortable for you. And just continue to sit or lay down with your eyes closed, allowing your body just to rest.
Muted. Linda, you're muted. Start to bring your attention to the soles of your feet. Thank you. The back of your knees. the place where your legs meet your body. Bringing your attention to the center of your heart and the top of your head. Notice how your body feels. Notice your breath and notice your thoughts. If you're laying down, rolling onto your right side and bringing yourself up to a sitting position, And everyone can just stretch like you're waking up from a mini nap if that feels right. Any stretch that feels good to you. Any movement that feels good to you. And if you haven't already, you can open your eyes. Thanks, Shuri. So I'm going to invite anyone, if you have any questions, um, the practices I shared are based on the healing power of the breath. Um, I was trying to look for my copy of it, but I have our polyvagal world and the body keeps the score right next to me right now. So, But the healing power of the breath is these practices are based on, and Dr. Gerberg and Dr. Brown did over 20 years of research to show the impact this could have on our nervous system and um, it could have on ourselves um, and how we, we are present for ourselves and the people that we want to be present with. So I think Shri put some resources in the chat. Yes, we have um, your contact email mm -hmm. and then two of the breath, body, mind um, sites that people can go to to get more information. Mm -hmm. um, also, I also put the survey link. It will also pop up once we are um, closing out of the webinar, but I put it there for anyone who wants to click on it ahead of time. We appreciate your input. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'd just like to extend a huge thank you, first of all, to you, Linda, um, for showing us some of these techniques and giving us all a chance to pause mm -hmm. and breathe because <laughs> sometimes we literally forget to take a real breath so thank you um, also want to thank the New England MHTTC um, especially uh, Maria Restrepo Toro my colleague at Yale Perch and Lee Lockhardy uh, from C4 Innovations who's helped with all the tech today. Thank you, thank you. Um, and especially to everybody who joined us today, um, whether you're joining us after the fact and watching our the video uh, or you were able to join us in person, we love that you were here and we hope that you can use some of these tools and share them with everyone, but um, specifically with uh, families that you might work with. Yeah. Um, that would be wonderful. And Maria, do you have any last minute? <laughs> No, I want to thank you both and Linda uh, and Cherie for bringing this. It's be wonderful. I love it. Um, and I love when I, it's, uh, for me personally, meditations that are not in silence are more helpful. So when I'm mo moving, I love the piano one. Yeah. Uh, I did feel like, oh my God, that's a lot. Six, you know, <laughs> so like, yeah. but you did say that it takes a while to build it up. Uh, but I, I absolutely love that. This is such a great tool and uh, we'd love to um, have you come back in the future. This is uh, very important during this uh, time. So we appreciate uh, you and Cherie and Lee and every person and everything is going to be available. 
Uh, and as Shereen mentioned already, please, we love if you can um, complete our survey uh, um, for our funder. That would be highly appreciated. It takes only two minutes. Mm -hmm. um, slides will be sent uh, uh, along with Linda's information so you can reach out directly to her. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have thank a wonderful, refreshed afternoon. And Linda, thank you so much. This was amazing. Thank you.